let's go ahead and make the equation that models this polynomial function. The first thing I do is write the general form for any polynomial equation. And it looks like this. y equals a times x minus h times x minus h times x minus h. So this is always my first step here. Now you're probably wondering why I wrote the x minus h three times. I mean, I could continue to write x minus h, but can you see why I wrote it three times right here? Well, that's because there's three x-intercepts, and the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So since there's three x-intercepts, I wrote x minus h three times. If there was another x-intercept, I would have put down x minus h again. Now, this point here is not an x-intercept. This is the y-intercept. This will come into play later. And for these problems that we're doing, the y-intercept will always be given. So that's my first step. So what I'm actually going to do now is just fill in those x-intercepts. There's one here. I'll make the points real clear on them one here and one here. So we have those three x-intercepts in green. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute these three x-intercepts for h in this general equation. I'm going to substitute it for h here, here, and here. And before I do that, don't let this a confuse you. That a is always part of the general equation, and it really represents the stretch factor of the graph or the vertical shrink of the graph, but we'll get to that later. I just don't want that to throw you off. So let's go ahead and do the following now. Let's rewrite this equation as y equals, and bring down your a, bring down your parentheses, and bring down your x, bring down your minus, and you're going to replace this h with one of the x-intercepts. That's Again, you're replacing each h with each different x-intercept. So let's read our x-intercepts from left to right. So this x-intercept over here is negative 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. So I'm going to replace this h with negative 4. And I'll just continue this process. Bring this x down. Bring down your minus sign. What do you think I'm going to replace this h with? Well, if we go to the next x-intercept over here, you should see that that is 1, 2. It's negative 2. So I'll replace this h with negative 2. Then I'll bring down this x. I'll bring down this minus. And what am I going to replace the last h with? Well, this x-intercept, the furthest one to the right, is 1 to its positive 2, right? You don't need to show that positive sign. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. It's positive 2. So I replace this h with positive 2 from right here. But I'm not going to show that positive sign. And now we're getting somewhere we need to simplify this because I have these double signs. So bring down your a again. That will come into play later. And what is x minus a negative 4? Well, hopefully you remember when you subtract negative, it turns to positive. So this x minus a negative 4 is the same as x plus 4. And you can even, in your mind, change these both to positive. We'll do the same thing here. So subtracting negative is the same as adding. So instead of x minus a negative 2, I'll write x plus 2. And this sign is all by itself. There's not a double negative here, so I'll just leave this as x minus 2. Now, these first steps I always do so I don't get confused with the signs here. And don't forget to bring down your a variable each time. But once you get better at this, you can skip these first two steps if you want to. And just remember to write it in this form with your a in front. And then you would do, uh, let's see, you should notice that the x-intercept here was negative 4. So the factor that goes with it is x plus 4. You just kind of switch the sign. The um, x-intercept here is negative 2. So the factor that goes with it is x plus 2. And the x-intercept here is plus 2, so the factor that goes with it is 
minus two. So if you can get better at this, you might not need to do these first two steps, but I highly recommend that you do them because a lot of times if you don't write this general formula at the beginning, you'll forget about that, that little a piece. Now, the next step is to figure out the exponents that go with each one of these factors. So let's look at the factor x plus 4. Which x-intercept goes with x plus 4? You got to think backwards here. The x-intercept that goes with the x plus 4 is the negative 4 right here. So I'm right here at negative 4. I'm actually going to even put that in a different color. I'm looking now specifically at this x-intercept. And I'm going to read the graph from left to right like this. Now remember from a previous video, these are my end behaviors here. Now I'm going to start here and I'm going to go and you should notice that as I go down here that the graph crosses through the x-intercept of negative 4. So when it crosses straight through, the exponent is 1. So this has an exponent of 1. So really what I'm deciding here is the exponent's going to be 1 or 2. Let's go to the next one, x plus 2. Which x-intercept goes with the factor x plus 2? You got to think backwards here. It's the x-intercept negative 2, which is right here, right? It's this one. So let's see what happens at this x-intercept of negative 2. So I went down, it crossed through, it turned. And you should notice here at negative 2, it also crosses through. It kind of crosses straight through. When it crosses straight through, the exponent is 1. So this is 1 here as well. And now I need to go to the last x-intercept. And the factor here is x minus 2. So the x-intercept that goes with this factor is the opposite of the minus 2. It's the plus 2, which is right here. So what happens here? Well, let's continue to go around this kind of like a roller coaster. See what happens at this x-intercept right here? It bounces right here at x equals 2. It does not cross. So when it does a clean bounce like that, the exponent's 2. So when exponent's 1, it crosses straight through. If the exponent's 2, it's a bounce. And now I'm really getting somewhere. And if you noticed, I haven't used the y-intercept yet. I will get to that. Let me just color code this so we're all in the same color. So we've now dealt with the x-intercepts. And I don't need to show these ones. These are little hidden ones. They like to play hide and seek. I am going to get rid of them. This one and this one. You don't need to show them. You can leave them in there if you want, but I don't want to. But you definitely need to leave this squared in there. Don't forget about that. Now the next step here is to figure out the a value here. So what you're going to do now is substitute in for the following. You're going to substitute in for the y value and all the x values to solve for a. And this is where the y-intercept comes into play at this piece here. And this will be given in the problem. So in other words, the graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 8. So my x value is 0. This is my x value. And my y value is 8 from right here. I'm going to substitute wherever I see an x in this equation down here, I'll put in a 0. And wherever I see a y, I'll put in an 8 from right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the y value here, I'll put this, let's put this in a different color. How about this color right here? So the y value is basically the y-intercept. It crosses the y-axis at 8 right here. The y value is 8. So replace this y with 8 equals bring down your a. We're solving for a. Parenthesis. Now we replace each x value with 0. Wherever I see an x, I will replace it with 0 because the coordinate of this point is 0, 8. So again, each x value we will replace with 0. So this x value I'll replace with 0. This x value I'll replace with 0. And just bring down the plus 2. Right, so I replaced this with 0 and then brought down my plus 4 and so on. Replace this x value with 0 right here and bring down your minus 2. And then bring down your squared. And now all I need to do is simplify this and solve for a. And we're getting close to writing the equation. So watch how I do this. Bring down your 8. Bring down your a. And let's just 
simplify this. What's 0 plus 4? That's 4. What's 0 plus 2? That's 2. What's 0 minus 2? That's minus 2. And bring down your squared. Let's keep going here. 8 equals a. Well, don't multiply these out first. We want, you got to do exponents first. That's the order of operations. So I'll bring down my 4. I'll bring down my 2. And what's negative 2 squared? Well, that's negative 2 times negative 2, which is plus 4. We're getting somewhere now. Now I'm going to multiply these three numbers, the 4, the 2, and the 4. We'll multiply these together, and I'll bring down my a. What's 4 times 2? That's 8. What's 8 times 4? That's 32. And then I'll bring down my a over here. So now I have the equation 8 equals 32 times a. And to undo multiplication by 32, I divide both sides by 32. And these drop off, and I have a equals 8 over 32. I'll write that over here. And you can leave your a value like this, but your teacher might want you to reduce this. It depends on the teacher. So let's reduce this. I'm going to rewrite 8 as, how about, let me think, 8 times 1. Do you agree that 8 times 1 is 8? And I will rewrite 32 as 8 times 4. Right? 8 times 4 is 32. And I can cross out common factors when I'm multiplying. So the 8's drop off and I'm left with 1 fourth. So the a value is 1 fourth. So let's keep that in mind. I'll clean this out and write a equals 1 fourth. And then we have one more thing to do. a equals 1 fourth. The last step now is to look right here, right here at this equation. And just copy this equation again and replace the a with the 1 fourth and you're finished. So let's do that. So I have y equals, y equals the a value, replace that with 1 fourth times x plus 4, I'm just copying the rest of the equation, just copying the rest of this, times x plus 2, times x minus 2, and bring down your squared right here. Bring this down, and you are finished. This equation represents or models this polynomial function. I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.